It is indeed very exciting time in the world of chip-to-chip -chip interconnect. PCIe Gen 5 devices, both root complex and endpoint, are hitting the market, and PCIe Gen 6 is just around the corner. My name is Priyank Tripla. I am Product Marketing Manager of High Speed Series at Synopsys. And in this video, we're going to talk about the transition to next generation of PCIe interface and how Synopsys is enabling this transition. PCIe is de facto within the rack unit interface, which enables processor to processor, processor to accelerator, accelerator to network interface card interfaces. PCIe switches and retimers extend the reach of this interface and allow SSD and flash controllers to interface with processor or accelerator using PCIe. PCIe standard ensures interoperability in chip to chip interconnect. PCIe SIG creates and maintains an integrators list of compliant designs. We have been working with PCIe SIG for all previous generations and for PCIe Gen 5, when currently the pre-FII compliance are happening, Synopsys IPs are enabling PCIe 5 ecosystem by being used in whole ecosystem, starting from processor to accelerator to SSDs and retimers. With PCIe Gen 6 planned for ratification early next year, we are helping our customers with this transition. Let's ask Madhumita, our technical marketing manager, about the new challenges our early adopters are facing and how we are helping them. Thank you, Priyank. We at Synopsys work closely with our customers to understand their requirement and align with the key features and specification they require for first-time silicon success. With the introduction of PAM4 and doubling of the data rate in PCIe 6.0, going from 32 gig energy to a 64 gig PAM4 signaling, signal to noise ratio targets are harder to meet because reflections are 3x worse. However, PCIe 6.0 channels are not available yet. We are working with our ecosystem partners like Samtech to ensure that our PCIe 6 design is robust enough to compensate for a 36 plus dB channel loss. Even though the spec mandates 32 dB with better bit error rate than the spec, we have demonstrated our successful interoperability at DesignCon, AI Hardware Summit, and Supercompute 21. And another key point to highlight is that PCIe 6 has reduced package loss budget. Our FI compensates for this package loss reduction. We provide package escape studies to make sure our bump map is optimized and customers can effectively maximize their pitch front. Also stack macros with minimum spacing whenever the desire to do so, depending on their use cases. In the world of IP, the prime concerns are power, performance, and area. We'll get into performance in a bit. Let's talk about power and area. How are our customers looking into these when they are transitioning from Gen 5 to Gen 6? Yeah. So PAM4 modulation are best implemented by analog digital converters and digital signal processing, best receiver architecture. Such architecture provides power benefit with process scaling and coupled with our own innovation in analog signal processing, we are able to offer power efficiency improvement by about 30%, which means PCIe 6.0 implementers can reduce power per bit by 30% compared to PCIe Gen 5. And using our in-house EDA tool Fusion compiler and advanced place and route technology enabled by AI and machine learning algorithm, we are able to offer 10 to 15% lower area in PCI 6.0 compared to PCI Gen 5. That's great. How about performance? I know the channel loss is a good metric. And in May of this year, we demonstrated our PCI Gen 6.5 with PCIe channels and also 36 and 38 dB of channel loss. Is there something else that's important for performance? Yes, both bit error rate and latency are the key performance metrics. 
PCI 6.2 uses PAM4 and requires forward error correction mechanism due to high beta error rate. And we can achieve higher order of magnitude than the prefect BER in our own design and silicon demonstration, much better than the spec specifies. Introduction of forward error correction and ADC DSP based architecture is often perceived to have higher latency, which is a significant concern, especially with CXL. And thankfully, our Synopsys Phi and Controller teams are able to provide an integrated Phi and Controller solution that provides about the same latency in PCI Gen 6 as in PCI Gen 5. Can you tell us more how both Phi and controller sitting together were able to get the same latency? Yes. Uh, so our end-to-end Phi and controller and VIP solution is well architected by our Phi and controller designers sitting together as one team to optimize the designs, including interface data path width optimization and timing closure at higher clock frequencies. Concurrent and synchronous optimization on both IP data path designs have provided the optimum latency numbers. Tightly closed loop collaboration between our Phi and controller design team have resulted in this robust solution with very lean TX and RX data path for our end to end solution. Are there any other new challenges our early adopter customers are asking our help for? Yes. Our Customers are not only counting on synopsis for their Phi and controller IP for best performance, power, area, latency aspects, but they're also asking for our help to be part of their whole system level analysis. Synopsis co-CEO RTGS calls it SysMore. Previous methods that analyze each part of the system independently simply will not work in the SysMore era. What is required is a hyperconvergent design flow that integrates best in class IP technology to deliver a holistic analysis of the entire system. And only Synopsys offers a growing set of integrated products that addresses the challenge of a hyperconvergent design. We have been implementing legacy PCI subsystems for customers over the years. And our own experiences, we are providing bottom-up optimization techniques, as well as backing up top-down approach with our groundwork in SIPI domain. We are performing package studies and HFSS simulation to validate meeting crosstalk specifications in a system level scenario and helping our early adopter customers to de-risk their chip's overall performance. Priyank, I have a question for you. What are the new features of PCI Gen 6 that implementers are looking forward to from a system level? There are a significant number of new features that offer system level differentiation. I wanted to talk about a couple of those. The first one has to be the new power state that PCI Gen 6 introduces, which is called L0P or LOP. This is a new power state that enables to save power in a non-destructive way for a functioning link. Let's say a link of X4 in this power state can ensure only one lane works and other three lane goes to a low power state. As with any other low power state, exit latency from this power, low power state is a key parameter of concern. Our design engineering team has spent their design cycles to optimize this latency. And we offer a differentiated performance with respect to exit latency from this low power state. The second one has to be the new diagnostic feature, which is called FBUR or first bit error rate. As you mentioned, PCIe Gen 6 uses ADC and DSP based architecture. And here to get an information about the performance of link, the important parameter is the first bit error rate because this DFE can get into a burst error. So the first bit error rate provides a good indication of link performance. With this new diagnostic feature and low power state, we are thrilled to enable the ecosystem to switch to PCIe Gen 6. Let's talk about interoperability. I know you are driving a lot of ecosystem interoperability with PCIe Gen 6. Can you tell us more where we are in terms of ecosystem interoperability with PCIe Gen 6? 
Yes, we started with demonstrating our PCI 6.05 and controller at PCI SIG DEF CON event. Then we interoperated our 5 with Samtex HPC connector at Design CON 2021. And recently at Supercompute 21, we had two PCI 6.0 demonstrations, one with Samtex AIML chassis and a complete CXL system demonstration between multiple vendors. Synopsis interoperated with Astera Labs and Intel. The multi-vendor demonstration showed robust CXL interoperability, successful transmission of CXL.io, CXL.cache, and CXL.mem transactions between Intel Sapphire Rapid CPU, Astra Lab Solstice 3U riser curves with two Aries CXL Smart Retimers, and Synopsis Designware CXL IP solutions. That's very informative. So it looks like the road to PCIe Gen 6 is paved with designware IPs. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks, Priyank.